Hey lovelies, it's MLP with Lovely Lulu Designs, and in this video I will be showing you how I created this tri-split traditional peekaboo and reverse peekaboo water slide wrap tumbler. I will also show you how I created the ice strips. As always, I will link the materials I used to create these tumblers in the description section of this video. I also wanted to give a shout out to the members of my Facebook group, Lovely Creations, and thank you all for sharing your creativity and your talents with us there, and for helping each other whenever someone needs it. It is a small community, but I am trying to be active and respond to your questions and creations whenever I see them. It is also where I first announce new designs, new tutorials, and list my tumblers for sale. If you're interested in joining, the link will be in the description section of this video. Members also get exclusive group discount codes for my website where I sell my digital designs. Those are all the announcements I have for you, so with that out of the way, let's get started. We're going to be working with a 20 ounce straight again. Once again, this is one of my favorite uh, sizes and sty styles to decorate because it is a straight, which means there's no taper from the top to the bottom, which is perfect for things like when you're doing a wrap, like what we're going to be doing today. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to warp your image before you're going to be wrapping it because it's the straight sides. Um, you can get these from DAT merchandise or DHT merchandise in Canada. However, she does have them listed as skinny tumblers, not straight tumblers, but they are the straight without the taper there as well. So I'm starting off with a fully prepped tumbler, which means it has been sanded, it has been washed, and it has been spray painted with a white primer. So I'm using a white base, and I'm going to be applying today Diamond Dust from M & Cat Glitter Factory. You can use the epoxy method or Mod Podge to apply your glitter if you would like. However, I'm going to be using um, the Tacket method today because I am going to be burnishing it on. Uh, this is a bit of a thicker cut glitter than what I usually use for Tacket. This is a fine cut glitter. Um, so I'm going to be using undiluted Tacket rather than uh, Tacket that I've cut with water. So um, if you're going to be using an ultra fine or a fine cut, you can always dilute it, but I'm using uh, sorry, an ultra fine or an extra fine, but I'm using a fine cut, so I'm going to be using just the straight tacket. So I'm just going to put some in my little dish here, and I'm going to be using, once again, my Taclon brush because it allows me to reduce my brush strokes pretty significantly. And I'm just going to stick it on a pool noodle, so then that way it's easier to put the, the adhesive on. So I'm just going to add some to my brush and I'm just going to do vertical strokes from the top to the bottom. Now I'm going to be doing two coats. I'm only going to show you guys the one. I want to make sure I'm doing two coats so then that way I haven't missed anything um, to hopefully reduce if I have to uh, do a second coat of glitter or not. The last time I did it without uh, diluting the tacket I did not have to do a second coat of glitter by doing the two coats of undiluted tacket so hopefully that holds true today again as well and I'm also going to make sure that I get the bottom completely as well so I'm just going to brush now from the top to the bottom making sure I get all the way down to the rim try to keep my coverage even it'll make it easier to work with. And then I'll just straighten out the bottom. So I'm just going to let this dry, then I will apply a second coat, and then I will come back and show you guys applying the glitter. So the tack it's dry, you know it's dry when it's sticky. Um, it's a repositionable glue, so it does dry sticky. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be just dumping a whole bunch of diamond dust onto this tumbler. Once the glitter's on, our next step is going to be to burnish it. Uh, it does give it a little bit of a different effect as well. It makes, it makes the glitter lay flat, so it is easier to get an even coat of epoxy for the next steps. So that's another reason why I like to do the tacket method. I am wearing a glove right now just to help protect my hands. Um, this, my skin is a little bit sensitive and the glitter is a little bit sharp, so. Okay, so that's fully burnished now. So my next step is going to be to seal this with a brush on sealer or with a spray sealer. I'm gonna be using CCDIY Quick Coat 
Uh, it is also available at M & Cat Glitter Factory. This is my favorite sealer. I find it does a really, really good job. With this sealer, I'm only gonna need one coat. I will again apply it with a Taclon brush. I'm gonna do that off camera though to save time because this is a bit of an in-depth tutorial and you guys have seen me use that before. So just long, vertical, even strokes with the quick coat. Um, and then I'm going to epoxy this until it's smooth. So I sealed it with quick coat and then I did one thin coat of epoxy because I realized that I do need to do one more step before I epoxy this till it's completely smooth. So after I did that one coat of um, epoxy, I did wet sand the tumbler to try to get it as smooth as I could. I did a wet sand for two reasons. One is because I want to keep the epoxy dust down. It's not good for your lungs. You should be wearing a mask when you're sanding with epoxy anyway, but that is another way to help reduce the dust that goes into your air from epoxy. And the other reason why is because it doesn't um, sand as deep and so I only had one thin coat of sealer on here I didn't want to accidentally be um, sanding off my glitter which unfortunately I did get a little too close on the top rim here I do have a little bit of exposed stainless now but I'm not concerned about that because I am going to be covering this with a drip later on so I'm going to be sure to pay some special attention to that later and fix that so be careful when you're doing this you don't want to do that you don't want to have to go back and fix it later learn from my mistakes so I realized that I did need to do one more step before I did the final um, sorry, like the, the smooth for the next step, which was I needed to first draw a line so I could put some lace down nice and straight. So when I draw a line, I use this tool here. This is a gauge from Thomas Maker Makes on Etsy. I showed you guys this before in previous videos. I used to just stack things. You can stack things as well. Um, because I'm gonna be marking on top of epoxy, I couldn't just use a pencil. So I actually drilled this out a little bit thicker so I could fit a marker in here. And of course, um, this is 3D printed, so it's not super strong. So if you are gonna do something like that I do advise you to use a lot of caution um, I didn't drill straight so now I have to use something to sort of um, kind of help keep my my pencil straight or my marker straight in here which is just a, a little toothpick that I shove in the bottom because it's kind of weird and wobbly if I don't do that um, if I want to use a pencil I just use some of these that I have these little uh, silicone stoppers that I have from some lids um, and I can just sort of fit them in either side and then my pencil through although I think I'm actually going to be ordering a second one for just my pencils so when I'm using pencil I use that when I use marker I use this so if you decide to do that proceed with caution be very gentle and be careful because this is 3d printed um, I don't know if I recommend if I necessarily recommend doing it but I did it and I, there was no going back and it is working for me so far so anyway, um, I've just used, so I pre-marked my measurements on here so that way I have consistency across my tumblers. It makes it easier for me. So I'm just going to uh, use this to mark this up. So I'm gonna have to change my camera angle to show you. Okay, so I've just got my camera switched the angle. Um, so I'm just gonna put this here, the platform on the desk, and I'm gonna put my fingers on either side here to keep it straight and level. And I'm just going to be bringing my tumbler in right to the tip of the marker. And I'm going to do uh, a turning motion with my tumbler and I'm just going to turn it around until I meet the line on the other side. I just chose my lace and this is the black lace that I like that I think I'm going to use. And I compared it here between the difference in the two heights that I usually use for this. And it's actually perfect based on the heights that I already had. So I am gonna go ahead and make that top line separation. That so my epoxy is on and it's been turning for a couple of hours. So my next step is going to be to apply my lace to the tumbler and I'm gonna be doing that using the epoxy as the adhesive. So because the epoxy is still wet, I am going to glove up for this, even though it does make me a little bit more fumbly with my fingers, but I wanna protect my skin from the wet epoxy. I also have with me a pair of tweezers. I had a technical error here and my camera didn't record me actually applying the lace to the tumbler, but all I did was I pressed the lace into the epoxy, keeping it straight between the lines. So the epoxy is hardened, so the next thing that I want to do, because this is still fabric, is I want to seal it before I put um, any more epoxy or anything else on top of the lace. So I've got some more quick coat in a little dish here and I'm just going to take my tackle on brush and I'm just going to go over the lace on the tumbler. If I were to streamline this what I would have done originally um, this is only my second time making this tumbler and I switched it up a little bit from how I did the first time but what I would have done is I would have first done my glitter 
the one coat of epoxy, then I would have done the uh, line here for my ribbon, uh, sorry, for my lace, and then I would have done another coat of epoxy, and then once that epoxy had hardened, I would have, um, oh, sorry, once that epoxy was sticky, I would have at that point added my lace and then sealed it with the quick coat and then done another coat of epoxy on top of it just to protect it because I think this is going to make it easier for the next step, and that would have reduced your number of epoxy coats. So that's sort of, um, as I'm learning, I'm doing, so kind of that's what I would have done next time. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to take my measuring tape and I'm going to measure from this line here to the bottom of the tumbler, which is about two and a half inches. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just basically measuring this to get the size that I want for my damask snowflakes. This is about nine and a half inches around the thickness part of the cup. So I'm going to take these measurements and we're going to go to the computer and I'm going to show you guys how I um, size and cut my snowflakes for this section. For the bottom section of the tumbler, I'm going to be using the Damask Snowflakes asset. This is available on both lovelyluludesigns.com, my website, as well as on my Etsy shop, which is Lovely Lulu Designs. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I have a Cricut machine, so I'm going to open up Design Space. I already have these snowflakes on my computer, so I don't have to download them or upload them or anything like that. They're already in Cricut Design Space for me. So I'm just going to start by ungrouping them. And the first thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to start determining my size for these. And I also want to slice a couple of these snowflakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by making a rectangle in the dimensions that we had measured for the bottom of the tumbler. So we had measured the width of it as being 9.5 inches and the height was 2.5 inches. So I'm gonna pick one of these three snowflakes to be a full size snowflake. So I like this one, this is my favorite snowflake of the set personally, so I'm gonna be using this one here to be the full size one. So I'm gonna make this one here about 2.25 inches tall, and I'm going to just bring it to the front. I'm gonna move the rectangle all the way to the back. And I'm going to take this in here and I'm going to just sort of turn it to see if that's going to fit within my dimensions and it will. I'm happy with that. I want to try to cut these as big as possible because they are pretty delicate. So the larger that they are, the easier they are to weed. Now for these two here, I'm going to be reducing the size, but I don't have to go as small as this because I'm going to be slicing them. So I might give this one here for height. I don't know, three inches, see where that gets me. And you know what? I think I can go taller than that. Hold on, I'm kind of off the bounds of my canvas here. If you find that you're trying to move and you can't, that's just because you're at, you're at the, the canvas. So just shift things down and that should help. So I'm not gonna want this to be perfectly straight. I want it to kind of look like the snowflakes are falling. So I'm gonna give it just a little bit of an angle and you know what, I think I might give the height another quarter inch high. Again, the, the larger that you cut these, the easier it's going to be cut and to weed. And this one here, 3.5. And see how that one kind of lands. So something like that. So personally, I like this. I think these are a good size. I think they're going to be pretty good to cut. So I'm just going to take these here. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to duplicate it. So I have two of these. And I'm just going to line these up together. and bring this one to the back as well. Okay, I'm gonna hide one for now, and I'm going to select, you can only select two at a time, so I'm just gonna select these two here together. I'm going to choose Slice. And I can now get rid of that. I can now get rid of that. And there's going to be a duplicate of this, so I can get rid of one of the duplicates. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other rectangle. I'm going to take this one here and this one here, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to slice it. And just like before, I will get rid of the rectangle, and I will also get rid of my duplicate. 
and that piece there too. So this is what I'm going to be slicing, or so this is what I'm going to be cutting now with vinyl. Now I want to mention something because these are more delicate. When I make these, I'll show you guys my cut settings. So I'm just going to leave them here on the mat like that's fine. Actually, I might space them out just a little bit because I like to cut them out and weed them individually. It makes it for easier weeding. So I'm going to use a washi sheet setting and I'm just going to leave it on default pressure, but I'm going to be cutting this. Usually when I'm just doing a mask for a peekaboo, I use 631, so the temporary vinyl. However, I find that even when I choose less pressure on a washi sheet setting, it still rips up my 631. That being said, when I do this with 651 vinyl, I don't have that issue. So I'm going to use washi sheet setting and I'm going to be using 651 vinyl. And after I've cut it, I'm going to do a reverse weed, which basically means I put the transfer tape on top of the vinyl that has not been weeded. I burnish it on really, really well, and I'm going to weed it off of the transfer tape to help prevent any of those small little details from lifting or getting lost. So I've got my snowflakes successfully weeded. So here they are. So my next step is going to be to start putting them onto the bottom section of this tumbler to get ready for the peekaboo. So I'm going to just start with my, you can do this in any order you want, but I like to start with my full size snowflake and I just sort of pick a spot and I'm just placing it between my line and the bottom and I'm giving a little bit more space between my line and the top part of my decal because I am going to be banding that later on with some vinyl. And then I'm just going to burnish that on. Ignore my squeaky turner, I have to silicone it. Should have really done it before recording. So that's the one right there. And now for these two, I'm just going to, I'm gonna do one from the top and I'm gonna do one from the bottom and I'm just gonna kind of place them in a way to kind of get an idea of where I would like for them to go. So something like this looks pretty good. I'm just gonna move that one over ever so slightly. And again, I'm gonna leave just a little bit of space between that banded section and the snowflake. So that way I'm not covering up too much of that peekaboo. A little bit of it's good, it will make it, it'll give you nice clean lines, but I don't wanna hide the whole thing. It was too much work to hide it all. And then this one here, I'll just kind of try to line up a little bit to the bottom. Like that. So this epoxy was not sanded because I am going to be spray painting on it and I didn't want to have the sand lines There we go. So we've got our snowflakes now. So my next step is going to be to tape off this line. So I'm just going to use some painter's tape again. I like the painter's tape for this because it does help to give me um, straighter lines because it's not a very flexible tape like the electrical tape is. And I'm just gonna follow that line. once I get to the end, I'm just going to make a little tag so it's easy to pull it. And then I'm going to go over here and just make sure that I've got it completely pressed up against here so I don't have any leaking into my middle band section. Okay, so I'm just going to be spray painting this black. You guys have seen me spray paint before. I'm also going to be using uh, just some saran wrap to protect the top part here so I don't accidentally get um, any spray paint like splatter on the top part of my tumbler where I don't want it. So I'm going to go do that now and then once that is dry, I will show you guys my next step. 
base has been spray painted and you can see the oops here we go you can see the snowflakes um underneath the paint here i don't know if the camera's picking it up but it's pretty obvious to me where it is so my next step is going to be to start peeling off my masking tape but also to be peeling off the vinyl for the peekaboo now you want to be careful you don't want to scratch this you do want to wait for your paint to harden before you start peeling these off I like to use just a pair of sharp tweezers and just sort of go in and start pulling it now one of the things that is a little bit annoying because I had to use the 651 instead of the 631 is that it does have a bit of a stronger bond to the tumbler so this is going to come off in smaller pieces than it would if it was the 631 but it was the only way that I could get these snowflakes to cut properly so Basically, I'm just going to go around and I'm going to continue doing that. Once I am done removing all of the vinyl from the snowflakes, my next step is going to be to take a coat of quick coat and to just protect the paint from getting scratched while I do the top part. Again, I'll use a Taclon brush to apply that. I'm going to use even vertical brush strokes and I'm going to... Um, afterwards after that's hardened i'm going to go back to the computer so we're going to measure this top part here so maybe i'll do that now this is the same sort of idea as what we did before for the bottom so this time i want to be a little bit more precise in my measurements because this is going to be for a wrap so you're just going to measure from your your line here to the top of your tumbler as well as all the way around here and then you're going to take your measurements you're going to put them into your computer and um, I'm gonna show you guys how to, using Inkscape, which is a free software program, so that way, uh, I usually use uh, Illustrator, but this way you guys can um, do it at home and I can show you how to do it to make the wrap for the top half here, which is gonna basically be um, a reverse peekaboo. In order to make the reverse peekaboo, we need to adapt the file a little bit, and this is going to be needed to be done by you each and every single time you make a new tumbler like this, just to sort of tweak your dimensions a little bit, because based on what you've used on your background, if you've used glitter, no glitter, epoxy, flakes, a uh, few coats of epoxy, one coat of epoxy, the, the dimensions might shift ever so slightly. So um, also based on, on the tumbler itself that you're using from whichever brand is going to depend um, entirely on uh, what you've done in the past and, and what you have in your inventory. So you're gonna need to um, sort of tweak your measurements each time, which is why I'm not just selling them already ready to go. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to adapt it using a free software called Inkscape. Um, if you don't already have this on your computer, you go to inkscape.org where you can select download now and then just follow the steps to download it onto your computer. And what I'm going to be using for the damask section is going to be one of my newer files, the intricate snowflake damask seamless pattern. I also have a Christmas tree version of this as well as a skull one if you're not looking to do one that would be um, uh, winter or Christmas themed. However, um, for today we're going to be doing this and I will probably release more of them later as well because they are becoming uh, quite popular too but for today like I said we'll be using the intricate snowflake so I've already downloaded Inkscape to my computer and I've opened up a standard new document so this is basically what the document will look like the first time that you open it and I'm going to come into file and I'm going to open and I've already got the intricate damask on my um, computer. So one thing I wish that Inkscape did have is they had a better search tool to find your files. However, it's a free software program and it's really good um, considering especially that it is free. So I'm not going to be complaining about that. Um, you need to locate your folder where you've downloaded your files into. So you know, most people have that default into a download folder. So you're going to want to select your folder. And if you are downloading this design, you're also going to want to extract the files from its compressed folder before it will show you which files you have available in it. And I'm just going to look up intricate snow, snow flake damask, and I'm going to select the large scale seamless version of it. And I'm going to choose open. So I'm just going to size this down just a little bit so it's easier for me to work with. I like to work in inches, so I'm gonna change my unit of measurement. And I'm just arbitrarily going to choose a number. I'm gonna select five, oops, don't do that. If you do that, you can just choose undo by going to edit. Select your little lock tool so it keeps your proportions the same. Select five, and then it goes, scales down from there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just align it into the center. So I'm just going to choose my alignment tool here, which is going to open a menu on the right. 
and I'm going to do a horizontal and vertical alignment. Now I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to do that twice. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to select all three of those objects. So I'm going to have to take my uh, selection tool here and I'm going to press down and hold and completely encase the entire part of the contents. If I have only selected part of it, it won't select it. So you need to make sure that what you're selecting is completely within the bounds of your selection tool. And I'm gonna come here to remove overlaps and I'm just going to select this here, which is going to basically have it that they bump up right next to each other without any gaps, without pressing anything else. So I haven't deselected anything. I'm going to go into path and I'm going to select union. And what this does is it makes it um, all one large path. So they've been welded together. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see it all. And I'm gonna do that by selecting the minus sign on my keyboard. And that's gonna allow me to zoom out. And now I'm gonna go into object and I'm going, sorry, not to object, I'm gonna go into path and I'm going to select break apart. And this is going to make it so that each and every little tiny section of this design is now on its own. The reason why I'm doing this is because if you look here, I want to have only four sets of snowflakes um, going around my tumbler. I could choose, I could have just done it so that I had three in the middle and then half a snowflake, half a snowflake, which would have lined up to four going around my tumbler. But when I do that and I wrap it, I have to be very, very careful that I am completely, like we're talking within a millimeter. Um, wrapping it perfectly in order for you not to see the seam in the snowflake. And I don't want to do that. That's going to be too much pressure. So I'm going to actually have four full sets of the snowflakes and I'm going to be having it so that the seam is going to be on the black section. I'm going to show you what I mean when I get there. So I'm going to count over four. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to choose my selection tool, press down and completely encompass the parts I don't need. And I'm going to just choose delete on my keyboard and I'm going to delete them. Then I'm going to select all the pieces that I have left, so my four rows, and I'm going to go back into path. And this time, rather than break apart, I'm gonna do the opposite and I'm going to combine them. I'm going to once again, justify it to the center. So align it to the center. You don't have to do that. It's just how I like to work. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rectangle tool and I'm going to zoom right in. I'm going to select just a random color. So I'm going to choose, oh, sorry, one second. Let me undo that. Um, I guess they won't let me change it. No, I have to first draw it and then I can change it. So I'm going to undo set fill. So I'm gonna first take this here and I'm just going to draw, oh, it is allowing me to, do, to change the color. Okay, and I'm just going to draw a rectangle and I'm kind of just trying to line it up so that way it um, touches each right on the end here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take this little arrow and I'm gonna slide it over until it's basically just touching right there on the end, maybe a little more over. This doesn't have to be completely, completely perfect. This is just going to be a spacer for you, but you do wanna get it kind of close. So I'm just going to put it there like that. And that's just going to act as my spacer, sort of the distance between this one here and this one here. Now I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna bring this guy over here. And again, I'm just gonna have them kind of touch right along there. I'm gonna select both of these and I'm going to center align it just cause I like to work on center line. And this isn't working. It's not allowing me to just sort of bump them that way. So I just wanna sort of get it as close as I can. Now I need to know the dimensions of what I had measured um, for the uh, distance around my tumbler and also from the bottom to the top of where I'm gonna be putting the wrap on my section. And I've already done that. So I have 4.35 inches tall by 9.35 wide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm again gonna select both of these objects. And this time I'm going to change the width on it to 9.35. 35 inches. This is going to again depend on your measurements. These were my measurements. Now what I can do is I can take this rectangle and I can delete it. It was just a spacer. It was just going to help me line things up. So I'm going to put this back into the center again and I'm going to take this rectangle tool again and I'm just going to make a rectangle, change that to black, and I'm going to change the measurements on this to exactly what I had measured. So I'm going to unlock my dimensions for my rectangle. My width was 
three five inches. And my height I had measured was 4.35 inches. I'm going to take this and I am going to center it. And I'm going to take the snowflakes. I'm going to make them white by changing the color here on the bottom part of the bar. And I'm also going to go to object and I'm going to select raise to top. So this way the snowflakes are on top of the black uh, rectangle here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my cursor. I'm going to select both of the objects. I'm going to go to path and I'm going to select difference. And that's just going to cut these snowflakes out of this back rectangle. So if you look here and you kind of look, you can see the line of the artboard in behind it. That is how I know that this worked. So what I need to do now, if I try to print this like this with pieces hanging off of either side of the document, it's not going to allow me to print the pieces that are not on the document. So I'm going to want to change my document so that way it fits my design. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to choose document properties and right down here on the bottom, I'm going to change it to inches. And I'm just going to do eight and a half by 11, but I'm going to use landscape mode. So I'm going to make the width uh, eight and a half and the, uh, sorry, the width 11 and the height eight and a half. And I'm going to select enter. And then I can go back to align and distribute and recenter that. I'm sorry, I have to select it first. Now I can go back to align and distribute and recenter it so it's completely within the bounds of my paper. And then when I go to file and I go to print, I'm going to select preferences just so you can see. And I'm going to choose print preview, select OK, and then hit the print button. And this is going to preview what it's going to print. When I do print this, I'm first going to print it on standard regular printer paper to make sure that my dimensions are correct. And then um, if they are, I will print it on my water slide paper. If they aren't, I'll tweak it. Uh, a bigger, smaller, whatever it is that it needs, just a little bit so that it fits perfectly. And, uh, and then I'll print it on the water slide paper once I'm happy with it. So now you can see that I have the full design on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and it will print the entire thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is going to be appropriate for the tumbler. And once I have it tweaked and ready, I will print it on my water slide and show you guys how I wrap it. So my water slide has been printed out. I can cut it because Cricut has maximum um, like cuttable surface area, which is like 9.25 and I was just 0.1 over that. But I don't wanna bring it down because I don't wanna accidentally have a seam. So I just hand cut it, did a careful job of it. And uh, this is what I have right now. So I've got my tumbler, this has been wet. So it's already sliding off the paper nice and easy. I also have a silicone, um, brush here as well and I've got a little cup full of water and the first thing I'm going to do is I am just going to put water all over my tumbler. I'm going to completely do this in frame however this is not something that I am super super skilled at and sometimes I am a little fumbly with it so I'm going to do my best to kind of show you guys um, how I do it but yeah we're going to see how this is going to go. So I'm just going to start by sliding that paper out from behind it and I'm going to line it up with the seam of my the seam of my lace. So that way my seam is just sort of always on the same section. And what I'm trying to do as well is I'm trying to make it so that it's straight right out of the gate because it's a lot easier to just keep it straight than it is having to try to play around with it and straighten it as I go. So I'm going to now turn it on an angle for me to see and I'm gonna start smoothing it out. And what I'm trying to do is one, like I said before, trying to keep it straight, but two, I'm also trying to make sure that I don't have any wrinkles or any major um, water collecting underneath the surface of the tumbler, sorry, of the wrap, because I don't really wanna have to try to work those out after the fact. Once I've lined it up, uh, I kind of just want to have to secure it a little bit, make sure we're on point with everything, um, and not have to do major adjustments because it starts getting harder the, the more you have it wrapped. So as I go, my finger's wet as well, so it slides nice and easy over that water slide. I'm just going to make small corrections as I go. Each time I make a correction, it's going to crinkle the paper, so I need to watch for that as I go. 
and just keep pressing it out and over. You can do this with the brush as well if you don't want to do it with your finger. That will also work really, really well to help keep things smooth. And I'm just going to go over what I've already done to try to make sure that I'm not making creases as I'm going. And especially when you're first starting, it, it'll slide more than it will later. So as you're making your small corrections, you might need to go back over uh, what you've already done to kind of make sure that it hasn't shifted parts that you had already flattened earlier. You're gonna notice I'm gonna have some crinkles on the top. That's okay. I'm not worried about that because I'm putting something on the top of this. We're gonna be putting those drips on the top part of this. So I'm really not worried about there being a little bit of an overhang here. I actually measured for it to be slightly higher so it will overhang over. Um, it's just what I do, it's just how I do. If I wasn't going to be doing the drips, I would have been a little bit more accurate on the top part here, but I wanted to allow myself just a little bit more wiggle room with that. And now we're coming around here to the seam. And this is where I said it's a lot easier for me to be lining it up black on black than it would have been for me to line up a snow, half a snowflake to half a snowflake. So that's why I took that extra time to sort of play around with the spacer in order to make this file a lot easier to wrap. Once you kind of have worked through the math of it, which I hope I, I did the heavy lifting for you um, by sort of showing you those cheats. Um, it's a lot easier to do and it gets easier as you do that. And what I had meant when I said, you know, like you're going to need to tweak it each and every single time, like you're going to need to make one each and every single time you can use the template, you know, like that, that template that I had made, I'm going to use that one on my next tumbler. I'm just going to tweak it a little bit um, based on the, the dimensions, which is another reason why I left that overhang, because if I have to bring it down a little bit, I'm not going to be too short on top and bottom. So really what I'm doing now is I'm just making sure I don't have those creases. Again, there's some creases right at the very tippity top here. I'm not too worried about that. I can get rid of those. Um, if they're still there, I, I, again, not too worried about it. I can hide it with the, um, the drip that I'm going to be doing. But what I really want to make sure is that the body is nice and smooth. It's nice and straight. There's no wrinkles and there's no water trapped underneath it. So there it is. It's wrapped. Um, I'm just going to take, oh, if I can have just a little cloth here. Oh, there's my phone. And I'm just going to go over it like this. Dry it up. Press it firm. And we're good. So I'm going to seal this. I'm going to seal this um, with some quick coat once the, the water slide has dried. And then I will show you guys my next step after that. So I have my tumbler ready for epoxy. I have my epoxy here, but before I put any epoxy on it, I'm going to take some Glacial Ice Extra Fine Cut from m and Cat Glitter Factory. And I'm going to take just a small amount, just something like this, and I'm just going to stir that into the epoxy to give the top section where the black is and also where the lace is, just a little bit of a sparkle. And I'm gonna mix this in really well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a fine coat of epoxy or sorry, a thin coat of epoxy to the tumbler. And um, 
when I say that, what I mean is I don't want it to be too thick, so I don't want it to be crazy runny because we're going to add a few decorative details here. Um, but it, it's not going to be too thin like it would be if you were just adding like a glitter layer. So it's somewhere in between um, the amount that you would use to put a glitter layer on and the amount that you would use um, if you were if you were using the epoxy as a sealer. Okay, so now that I've got that, I'm just going to start off by putting a thin coat of epoxy on the top layer. Now that the epoxy is on, I'm going to torch really quickly just to get rid of any bubbles. You want to be careful not to over torch. You don't want to accidentally singe your epoxy. Also over torching can cause fish eyes in your epoxy as well. So that's just a tip for you too. So I'm just going to move quickly, hit uh, a spot only one time, and then I will show you guys the next step. While that continues to spin, I'm going to take the uh, a little bit Alexis Eco Glitter in the medium cut. And I'm going to add a scoop of that into my epoxy. It's okay if little tiny pieces get on the tumbler because we are using it on the tumbler. I'm actually gonna add two scoops. And then I'm just gonna mix that in with my stir stick. Okay, I'm gonna use a silicone brush. Um, I'm gonna use the side which has uh, a bit of a wider side to it. I'm gonna try this. If it doesn't work out the way I want to, I'll just go back to using my finger. But I'm just going to add a few little sections with just that um, eco glitter in it, that a little bit of Lexus. And I'm trying to stay in the bottom black section. It's okay if it bleeds into the snowflakes just a little bit because it's white glitter in behind. But I'm just trying to add a little bit of shimmer here and there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, where is it? I'm going to be using Mixol in white, and this is an epoxy dye. You can also use Armor Art in white, um, which is a CC DIY product, which is also really great. Um, I like the Mixol because I find that it gives some pretty nice lacing. Um, so it's, it's actually become my preferred white epoxy mixative uh, recently. And I'm just gonna mix this right in with where I had that eco glitter. So I'm using the same little amount of epoxy. Okay, now I'm gonna take that sharp pointy side of my silicone tool, which I, I got these on Amazon. I will put links in the description section as well. And I'm just going to add a few streaks with the white here and there. And what I'm trying to be cautious of is I'm trying not to get onto my lace area. If I get a little bit on the white glitter here, right by that band where I'm gonna put the banding, it's not that big of a deal, but I do wanna to try to avoid being up too high where it's maybe getting onto the lace. And I'm just kind of changing direction. I'm swirling my, my brush a little bit as I do this. Um, and it's just gonna help it's, sorry, it's just going to help um, with the detailing that you get out of this. Okay, my final thing that I'm going to do is I want to add a little bit of sm like more snowflakes to that bottom section. So I'm going to do this with glitter and I'm going to keep with me a pair of tweezers so I can move things around as needed. Um, and what I have here is I have a mix that I've made myself using Emma Cat Glitter Factory products. So I've used Glacial Ice in the um, Extra Fine Cut. I've used MLP Chunky Mix and I've used White Snowflakes as well as some of the circles, but in the, um, it's like the MLP kind of silvery whitish mix. Um, it's this one here. I don't have it labeled, but I'll find the link for the site and I'll, and I'll link it in the description section as, as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by taking a little bit, pinching it between my fingers and just dropping it onto the tumbler in the section where I'm adding it. Mm -hmm. 
So I am allowing some of the smaller chunky pieces as well as some of the extra fine glitter to fall between the snowflake sections so it doesn't look like they're kind of off, like, like it was done purposely around it. It's trying to be including those snowflakes as well. But if I get chunkier bits, I'm gonna move them out of the way. That's why I have my tweezers here. Okay, so now I'm gonna look over where I've put things where things have fallen and I'm just gonna shift them out of the way if they need it. I once had someone ask me, how do you get your snowflakes to look like they were hand placed? And I told them that is exactly like you answered your own question. You just move them around individually until you like where they are. And that's looking good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let that harden and then I'm going to epoxy this until it's smooth enough to add my bands. And then I will show you guys the bands and the drips and then this tumbler is basically done. So I just wanna show you guys the rim before I move forward. So you see here, there's a few little creases and whatnot that um, that kind of got pulled away and that's okay because we're doing that drip here. So I was never really too concerned about it. I just didn't want it to pull down any deeper than that. So now I'm gonna be adding the bands and I did um, for this tumbler, I'm doing a black and then a silver chrome and then another black on top of it. If you're using the bands that are available at my Etsy shop, um, I did change the center band, uh, the first, sorry, the last band, the third one. So it's 0.1 inch instead of 0.13. Um, but other than that, the file has remained the same. So I'm just going to start by grabbing my widest band. And I know I've had some people say that they find it easier to layer the bands first, and that's fine. I just show you the process that works for me. It's important though to find what works for you. And I'm just gonna find my seam here, which is right here. And I'm going to lay my band down. And I try to start it off so that it's pretty straight and now I'm just going to follow my line. So I'm not gonna press this really down too hard yet because I wanna try to make sure that I have a pretty straight line before I do that. Um, this is a bit of a flexible um, product, the, the vinyl bands, so it's really easy to get kind of wonky lines. And you're going to get some. It's not ever going to be perfect. That's okay. These are handmade. That's what's going to happen. But I do try to make it at least as appealing to the eye as it can be. And then I just line it up here. And that actually lined up nicely. And wow, that actually looks pretty good. It's rare that that happens on one go. So I'm just going to peel it back ever so slightly. Take a pair of scissors, which are currently missing. Oh, right here. And I'm just going to make a cut and then do like so. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom next. I find that the first band is the hardest one to lay down that bottom band because it's the one that you're going to be referencing for the rest of what you're doing. So once that one's on pretty straight, I find it a lot easier to uh, continue on with the next one. So now I'm going to take my chrome and this is available at uh, Sam Alam's West Coast Vinyl out in BC and her vinyl is fantastic. I really like it. And I'm just going to try to center it between those two um, those two edges, make it as even as I can and just kind of follow along. Now this one I am going to be pressing down as I go because the, the chrome, these metallic vinyls, they have a tendency to pucker if you don't and I want to try to avoid that happening. And I'll repeat that on the bottom. Okay, and now I'm gonna add my final band, which is my thin band. Now just keep in mind that the thinner you make these, the easier they are to stretch. And you kind of want to avoid that because you don't want to have different thicknesses from the start of your band to the end. So you do wanna keep it tight, but you don't wanna pull it too hard that you're accidentally going to stretch it. 
So on this one, I kind of just work in small pieces at a time. So I'm not putting tension on the whole piece of vinyl the entire time to kind of help prevent me from overstretching it and kind of warping it. And then repeat that on the bottom again. Okay, so this next step is optional. Um, what I wanna do is I wanna do a glitter rim right around here to make sure that when I put my drips on here, I have the proper color underneath. Because sometimes what happens when you have drips is it kind of pulls away from the very lip and then you kind of see, in this case, it would be the black um, coming in from underneath it. So I haven't done this before, but I figured I would give it a try and see how it works. I'm going to just add a little bit of Mod Podge right around the rim here, and then I'm going to put diamond dust on it because that's what I'm using for my ice drips. So I've got my Mod Podge in a container. I'm just using a small brush. It doesn't matter what brush you're using for this. And I'm just going to apply a fair amount. I'm not going to completely brush it out. I am applying a pretty thick coat because like I said, this is going to be a drip eventually, so it's okay to be a little thicker here. You just have to make sure you give it enough time to dry. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So there's a pretty thick coat on there. And now I'm just going to take my diamond dust and I'm just gonna sprinkle it all the way around that edge. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry before I brush it off because this Mod Podge is pretty thick so I don't want to accidentally wipe off my glitter. So I'm just gonna let this dry and then I'll come back. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna let this dry and then what I'm going to do, again, optional, I like to seal what I do before I move on to my next step. So I wanna seal on my bands and I also wanna seal on this top part before I'm gonna add my glitter drips. So I'm going to put on one thin coat of epoxy. It's gonna be a very thin coat, optional, it's how I work. I prefer to seal. One of my rules is um, better sealed than sorry. So I'm going to seal this first before moving on to adding those drips. So my tumbler is ready for me to start putting the drip around the rim here. And I'm gonna be doing like an ice or snow drip um, for this tumbler. So what I've done is I've just mixed up some epoxy. I mixed up a little bit more than what I would usually mix up because I was also epoxying some other tumblers. So I have maybe about um, 15, uh, milliliters of epoxy left over. Um, I would say you don't need more than 10 to do this, but uh, that's what I have left over. So all that I've done is I've put it into a larger cup to make it easier for mixing. And I'm going to be using Nice and Thick by CCDIY to thicken my epoxy so I don't have to sit here watching and babysitting um, the epoxy to, to allow it to uh, to harden and thicken enough for it to be use, usable for drips. So this is just a very light powder and I just have a spoon that I'm going to be using to scoop it in. So I'm gonna just start by taking a pretty hefty heap. This is definitely like a rounded heap and I'm going to knock that into the epoxy, move my container aside, take a stir stick. I'm just using a silicone stir stick and I'm gonna start mixing this in. So when you're mixing this in, a couple of things you wanna be mindful for is you wanna make sure that you get rid of all of the clumps. So if you can see, there are some clumps in here. So I'm gonna be working those out until this is nice and smooth. As I continue to go, this will thicken. Um, I'm going to keep adding larger spoonfuls of the thickening powder until it starts getting a little bit thicker because then it kind of turns pretty fast. So then I'll start using smaller scoops. So I'm just going to keep repeating this process until until it is thick enough. And the way that I'm going to um, test the thickness is I'll just take some. First of all, you can kind of just drip it out of your, off of your stir stick like this, and you can see it's way too runny still. But when it starts getting a little bit thicker, you can always put it against the side of your tumbler and see how it drips down. And if it's really dripping down too fast, then you know that it is definitely not thick enough yet. So I'm just gonna keep repeating this process until I'm happy with the thickness or just about because I'm going to be adding glitter which is also going to continue to thicken it. So overall I'm pretty happy with this thickness now. If I was just adding a coloring I would probably add a little bit more of the 
uh, thickening powder, the nice and thick. However, I'm adding glitter, which is going to thicken it a little bit further. So I did the base in diamond dust and that's what I want to continue using on my drip rim. Um, so I'm just going to add some into the tumbler or sorry, into the uh, epoxy, the thickened epoxy. It's not going to be a ton that I'm going to add at this point. It's not going to be super crazy sparkly, but I do want to have some sort of on the inside of the mixture here as well. I will be showing you guys how I got the full effect um, in just a moment on my turner. But for purposes of just doing the drip, I'm just going to mix a little bit of that diamond dust into the epoxy. So I'm hoping the camera will focus and pick this up. Um, but you can sort of see it looks a little bit snowy, but it's not overwhelmingly glittery and I did have to add quite a bit just to even get the amount that I have in here. So I don't want to keep going because I don't want to waste the glitter because it will just keep absorbing and sucking it in. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to consider this to be done with the amount of glitter for now and I'm just going to start applying it to the lip of the tumbler. So I'm going to start off by scraping this guy clean and cleaning this tool. I don't like to use my larger stir stick. I find it makes it a little bit harder for me to control. I prefer using a uh, popsicle stick. However, if you like using this, if you're comfortable using this, then that is perfectly fine. Just do whatever works for you. Okay, so I'm just gonna be taking my wooden popsicle stick and I have my tumbler and I already have my arm in here because I am going to be putting this on my turner and I don't want to put this inside and ruin any of the drip that I was working on in case it kind of rubbed it away or rubbed it on the inside of the tumbler. I wanted to try to avoid that. So I'm just going to um, start off by taking a scoop here and just kind of bringing it along that rim and where I want it to maybe drip down a little further, I'll add it a little bit thicker, but for right now, I'm not worrying too much about that. I'm just trying to get a decent line around the top part of the rim. So if it's kind of dripping off your popsicle stick, I just sort of roll it on here, almost like you would spaghetti on a fork, um, just to make sure that it's not gonna drip all the way down my tumbler to try to avoid issues later. And again, because I've thickened it, it's not runny the way that some of the other ones are. Um, and that's how I like my drips, it's how I prefer it. But you can see it pulling away nonetheless from the top. Um, I kind of uh, like this here. So I'm just going to every once in a while put my tumbler back upside down just to sort of get those drips to go back down to the lip again while I do um, sort of designing on how I want them to drip down. So if some areas look thin, like if I'm seeing the black through it, I'll just add a little bit more there. If there are sections where I want things to drip a little bit more, I will make it a little heavier in that section as well. So overall that feels pretty good. Right now I'm going to pop it on my turner and I'm going to start doing next steps. So now that I have my tumbler on the turner, I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to start sort of shaping some of these drips a little bit sharper. Um, so when I want the tumbler to stop, because of the way that I've set up my turner, I can actually just hold my tumbler. You might need to use your motor. And I'm just going to start coaxing that into a little bit more of a sharper icicle drip. And again, if you see things starting to sort of pull away and you don't want them to, this is still workable. I can still just sort of move things into place a little bit more. So this one here, I want to have be a little bit sharper. So I'm kind of just pulling the edge of the epoxy down until I get that sharper drip that I want. So it is kind of flowing still. You can sort of see that here. So I'm just going to correct for that. And that could have been even just from me trying to show you in the camera angle. Um, 
because it kind of pulled to one side while I was doing that. Now that I have the drips in generally the shape I want, I want to make sure that I haven't pulled too much over the edge of the, or the lip of the tumbler there, because I don't want to have to have a massive job cleaning out the rim. So all that I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some acetone on a Q-tip and I'm just going to on the inner part of the tumbler on an angle where I'm not kind of coming down the drip, I'm sort of staying away. I'm just gonna clean that up with some acetone. Make sure I don't have any epoxy there. And this is also how I clean my rims on the last coat of epoxy. I always make sure to do this. That way I'm not having to cut anything back with an X-Acto and breaking that seal. You don't wanna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna let this harden just a little bit. I still want it to stay sticky. So I'm gonna come back in about an hour and I'm going to be applying glitter onto just the drips. Okay, so the epoxy has been hardening for the past hour. It's still soft to touch, it's still very sticky and that's what we want. So I'm just going to start by taking my diamond dust and sprinkling it right over top of those drips. And you don't have to worry about it getting on sections of the tumbler that the drips are not on because that's not sticky, the epoxy is. I really just want to make sure I've got full coverage that I don't have any spots that I've missed. And that looks good. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a gloved finger And again, this is still a little soft. I could have let it harden just a little bit more, but I didn't. So this is where I am now. And I'm just gonna press it into the epoxy. So I am just doing gentle taps. I'm not pushing too hard, but I'm gonna be changing the landscape of, of the drips, they're gonna stay the way that they are. I'm just trying to make it so that the glitter is laying nice and flat, which will make it easier to cover since we don't wanna do a ton more coats of epoxy on top of this. And I am going to take at this point, just my um, fan brush. And just very lightly, I'm going to brush away just to make sure I don't have anything I have to fix. So what I mean by not having anything to fix is that if um, I accidentally had some epoxy drip someplace else and it was going to adhere the glitter where I didn't want it to and I don't, so. So now I'm just going to take my fan brush, do a light little brush over top. And that's basically it. Other than that, I'm still gonna have to epoxy this to get a nice smooth coat on the top. But once I have achieved that, this tumbler is done. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please click my logo to subscribe and tickle that little notification bell so you'll be notified of future videos. Subscribing is completely free and helps me create more tutorials like this. Thank you again for watching and I'll be back for more Tumblr tips and tutorials.